think this really depends on what it is that we do at this point. So now we have this Delta variant that is much more contagious. Because it's more contagious, it's going to be even harder for us to reach herd immunity. We're going to have to vaccinate an even higher proportion of people to get there. What happens then if we end up having another variant developing that's even more contagious, that could cause more disease, that could evade the protection of our immune system? And so how quickly we get this under control and which way we go depends on what we do now now when it comes to vaccination, to overcoming disinformation. And what we really need to do at this point is to make vaccination the easy choice. It needs to be hard for people to remain unvaccinated. Right now, it's kind of the opposite. It's fine. I mean, it's easy if you're unvaccinated. You can do everything you want to do anyway. But at some point, these mandates by workplaces, by schools, I think it will be important to say, hey, you can opt out. But if you want to opt out, you have to sign these forms. You have to get twice weekly testing. Basically, we need to make getting vaccinated the easy choice. That is what it's going to take for us to actually end the pandemic. All right, Dr. Lena Wen, Max Boot. My main concern is that we're not going to reach herd immunity because of vaccine hesitancy. And I know that's hard for a lot of people to believe who desperately want the vaccine right now. And they're thinking, oh, well, it's just a small percentage of people who are actually anti-vaxxers. And that's true. There is the anti-science, anti-vaxxer contingent. But I think that there are many more people, millions of people who, for whatever reason, have concerns about the vaccine, who just don't know what's in it for them. And we need to make it clear to them that the vaccine is the ticket back Back to pre-pandemic life. And the window to do that is really narrowing. I mean, you were mentioning, Chris, about how all these states are reopening. They're reopening at 100%. And we have a very narrow window to tie reopening policy to vaccination status. Because otherwise, if everything is reopened, then what's the carrot going to be? How are we going to incentivize people to actually get the vaccine? So that's why I think the CDC and the Biden administration needs to come out a lot bolder and say, if you're vaccinated, you can do all these things. Here are all these freedoms that you have. Because otherwise, people are going to go out and enjoy these freedoms anyway. And now um, I will turn to Dr. Michael Minna. Michael is an assistant professor of epidemiology at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, and he's a core member of the Center for Communicable Disease Dynamics. He's also an assistant professor in immunology and infectious diseases at HSPH and associate medical director of clinical microbiology in the Department of Pathology at Brigham and Women's Hospital, Harvard Medical School. So Michael, I turn now to you. Thank you very much. I, I wanna start by, um, by pointing out very, very clearly that we have put 0.01% of the total cost that this pandemic is likely to cost Americans into testing, 0.01%. And I just want that number to stick in people's minds as we talk about testing as one of the major barriers here. Because it's easy to think of a billion dollars as a lot, but it is nothing compared to the cost of the virus. Um, the beauty of this plan is that it puts, the, 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 the American populace is very, very tired. We're seeing people just completely want to just disregard the virus altogether. And of course, there's lots of politics around that and it, you know, we can't undo what's been done. And so we have to meet the people where they're at. And I feel very, very, very strongly about this. People are unwilling to do much more than a two minute test on a Friday morning after they brush their teeth. And you know, so I think that if we can get these tools into people's homes or very, very convenient at their workplaces, um, uh, at their schools where, where every kid sits down on a Monday morning and a Thursday morning to homeroom and they have a test on their desk to use. Uh, you, if you can get 50% of a community or more, or, or it could even be less, to be testing regularly, then you don't have to call up somebody and say, hey, your contact 
was is infected, you should maybe get a test because you're already you have more people, not fewer, already doing their testing on their own and getting a better understanding of whether or not they're infectious much quicker than contact tracing ever does for a virus like this. And so the re a lot of the reporting requirements go away as far as public health uh, action. Now we still want to know what's going on at the population level. Uh, and we don't want to completely get rid of population data. So we can work with Apple and Verizon and Google and AT&T and treat this like the war that it is. This is a war. We should have all hands on deck. We should all be thinking about wartime type of activities. And in this case, that it could be very simple. Talk to these companies that literally extend and reach into every household in America and ask them to make reporting as easy as one click of a computer or smartphone. So if I want to voluntarily report myself as positive or negative, I can do that. And that becomes exceedingly powerful and will give public health officials more data, not less, if you're doing voluntary reporting of 20 million tests. And so these all have solutions and they all get built in when we put the public back in public health. Are you talking about